In Australia, we have Australia Post in America, it's the US Postal Service, uh, both at the moment coming under enormous flack for uh, maybe not doing what they need to do to make sure that they deliver the best possible service to both their staff and also to their uh, constituents. Uh, what's the problem in the United States with the Postal Service, uh, Natalie? Well, so there's a little bit going on here. Um, it all came to a head uh, about a week ago when some photos surfaced, but I just want to give you a bit of background Go first. Ahead. That um, concerns were initially raised about the United States Postal Service or the USPS uh, when Louis DeJoy was appointed as Postmaster General, and that happened on June 16th of this year. He, for the first time in, I think, two decades, had no prior USPS experience. He was, however, a major Trump donor. So uh -huh. this is where this is why there was concern. So shortly after DeJoy was appointed, uh, internal documents came to light showing that the agency was prohibiting overtime and that postal workers should leave mail behind at processing plants if it would cause them to to be late on their runs. And this is something that has never happened in the history of USPS. They've always lived by the motto of getting every piece of mail out every day. So postal workers have talked about uh, mail piling up in local offices. Veterans and departments of veteran affairs have reported that mail delays um, are causing a problem with fulfilling prescriptions for some of the vets. Um, but a USPS spokesperson has said that there was no blanket ban on overtime, but he did decline to comment on whether employees were being instructed to leave mail behind. So the photos that came to light, which sort of sparked uh, the latest round of controversy, is that there were photos of flatbed trucks with the blue, um, Australia has red post box, uh, post boxes yes. sometimes. Yes. Um, over here we have blue. So there was photos of basically these blue collection boxes being uh, picked up, put on the back of trucks and taken away. So then after they surfaced, there were also reports of mail sorting machines being taken away from mail centres. So there were six taken uh, in Maryland and four from one location in the very democratic stronghold of Baltimore City. So tensions are already high with the upcoming election. We've got coronavirus happening um, and mail-in voting is going to play such a large part of this election, probably the largest uh, that mail-in voting has ever So taken. you call it mail-in voting. We call it uh, uh, postal ballots here, don't we? Uh, postal Correct. votes. Uh, we uh, we uh, ask uh, the um, the election here to count those at the end. Or they'll, they'll they'll tell you more often than not that uh, they won't know the final result until they count the postal ballots. So it's in in America the big complaint I can imagine now. Uh, the, all the sabre rattling is going on. All the stirrers are. Uh, are making sure that their side of the uh, uh, election gets a fair shot. Um, but here we go, we've got the games already with 100 days to go. The, the games have started in America, huh? Well, they have. And so the Democrats are scared that uh, Trump and the Republicans are purposely trying to slow the mail down because what happens over here is if the ballots are not received by election day, regardless of when they were sent, they, don't count they them. will not. Wow. They, they won't. Wow. Um, and so the other issue is during the primaries, there were 65,000 votes that were discarded because they arrived late. So this is the concern. The other thing is in every state, um, you it requires uh, a different stamp for the postage yep. of a mail-in yep. vote. So some states class it at, um, in the same class as junk mail. So it can take three to 10 days for it to arrive. Um, in other states, it's considered first class mail where you put a stamp on it and it, off it goes and then that will typically arrive faster. Um, and in the past, all electoral mail has been funneled through the post office quite quickly. Um, DeJoy has come out and said that it will be treated according to the class of mail 
that it is. So there's all these little things that um, are going on and the Democrats are concerned that it's a move that could potentially disenfranchise many, many um, Well, that kind, of, that kind of makes sense. When you first start hearing and, and talking about the story, you start saying, so what's the problem? Now the problem is very clear. Uh, unlike Australia, where we don't declare an election until all the votes are counted, in America, they have a cutoff time. They don't arrive or we don't see them, they don't count. That is extraordinary. Exactly. Wow. Exactly right. So um, I found out recently that in the Gore-Bush election, yep. um, they were counting. And um, so we all know that Gore won the popular vote. What I didn't know was he actually won the entire election. But they were very slow with counting and there was something going on with mail in ballots. And so um, Bush declared himself the winner. Gore conceded and Bush won the election for the second term. But after counting all of the votes, Gore had actually won. But because the winner had already been declared at that point, there was no no argument or brings, no change. It brings a whole name. new meaning to the term inconvenient truth, doesn't it? The documentary Absolutely. that uh, Al Gore uh, spent a lot of time and money putting together. Correct. And so back in April, um, Trump said he would not approve a $10 billion loan for USPS um, and unless it raised the charges for Amazon and other big shippers uh, to four to five times the rate that they're currently charging. Because he believes that those companies are taking advantage of USPS and its lower rates. Wow. So he has complained for years about all of this. Um, and that's why he says he's not approving this um, relief package or this loan. And projections do show that there is a liquidity crisis within USPS. So, I mean, what Trump is saying that he's doing does make sense. It's just the timing of it all is absolutely terrible. So there are legal uh, battles which are mounting. Uh, the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, is in there ready to sue the government. Um, so this is a, a thing that's unfolding. However, after all the media attention, um, DeJoy has come out and stopped any of these changes that were put in place in terms of um, uh, less opening times for uh, the retail stores, uh, no overtime for the postal workers and all those sorts of changes, which would slow mail down until after the election. So he hasn't said the changes aren't happening. They just will happen later in the year. Wow. Work to rule. Keep the pressure on. Uh, Natalie, as always, um, you give us uh, some real insight into, into the travails that uh, America is going through at the moment. As you touched on, COVID-19 is still making a fearful impact. You've got the weather on, on board, and then of course you've got the, that, this incredible inner war, it's called that, uh, that uh, war between the Democrats and the, uh, the Republicans. And there are so many layers of... Uh, of um, of, uh, that we have to sort of peel uh, away before we can actually see what's going on. Thank you very much for getting to some of the uh, insight and, and giving us a sense of just how difficult it is to, to get around America today. It certainly is. And I stirred you last week about how it's summer here and you're suffering through winter. Yep. Well, we are now in, in California anyway, going through the worst heat wave in 20 years. So I shouldn't have joked, there is no end in sight for this heat wave. So there's weather events happening across the country. It's crazy. I hope your air conditioning uh, stays on, uh, on uh, as they say, um, on board and uh, you don't get a brownout. I mean, have you experienced any brownouts in America while you've been there? Look, I haven't, um, but they're certainly happening. They're, they're talking about it on the news consistently because there is so much pressure on the power grid. Um, there are friends of mine that are posting. We haven't been affected as yet, but I'm assuming it's just a matter of time. All right. Well, keep, keep as cool as you can be. Thanks, George. All the best. Thanks, Nat. Natalie Sadie from the United States.